hello and welcome to our video on making a severed head. This is part one, sculpture. Blocking out the sculpt. Here Lear's going to add a layer of clay of the entire thing to make it nice and useful. Effectively we need something slightly larger than the mannequin head we're using. We've chosen the mannequin because it looks vaguely, it's the one we have that looks most like the person we're trying to make the head look like. Um, we just need to add a bit more depth and give us space ourselves some space to work on the features to add in the extra detail we need and we also needed to make it slightly bigger over the back of the head and we needed to make sure that any small undercuts that were left in the structure of the face weren't in fiberglass so that if we had to pry the mold apart we'd be shearing off clay in the mold structure not fiberglass which would break the mold you can see Leah now is just layering up clay around the neck, alternating between packing clay on with her fingers, then grabbing a tool to even it out, get yep. the detail she wants. I've cut off, I've given it a neckline there, I've sort of decided roughly how far down we want the head to go. This one's a severed head, so it's not a mask, so it can sit fairly low down, but we don't need it covering any of the torso. I'm sort of smoothing things out, checking, checking I've got enough depth. I think at some point I was definitely using tools to check how deep the clay was and how thick I'd got it. I'm not sure you can see that on this, and I'm smoothing it down a bit there to make sure it got no bumps, that it doesn't look porridgey. What tools are you using? I'm using a kidney tool. So this is a continuation, we're going to refine that shape, keep shaping and adding and shaping and adding, just trying to get the forms yeah. to look vaguely like the guy. There's also a lot of shape in your skull. It's, your head isn't just a smooth curve, so I'm trying to make sure that we've got the right indentations, the right lumpy bits, to make it look like a real head rather than something vaguely head-shaped. Yeah, you saw a minute ago her putting bridges in above the eyebrows. Yeah. Evening out any high points, putting in some details. Just trying to rough the entire thing to look like a real person's skull head shape thing. And we're moving on to the secondary forms now. That's where we're starting to really try and make it look like the guy it's supposed to look like. Yep. We have got a reference photo of him which we're referring to. It's right behind me or Wookiee at this point. Um, you just saw there I was looking at it. Yeah. So this is me adding the nasal nasolobial folds that are quite pronounced on him. In a minute you'll see me just just starting to tweak the nose to balance out the structures there. And it's all about, just at this point, just refining all the shapes and putting in all the forms that this guy has that the basic structure doesn't. We're not making it look exactly like him, but we're aiming for something that is recognisably similar to him. Um, so we can use it for more generic things, but also it can be used to represent him. So there, I just put a fairly heavy eyebrow ridge and putting in some cheekbones now. Because this guy's relatively gaunt looking with heavy eyebrows. And he has that distinctive sort of crease line across his forehead that's at a slightly odd angle. And here you can see I'm putting the eyes in, but what I'm doing with the eyes, I'm just trying to make them smooth. Because what I want to be able to do is later, when we've got the finished head, uh, fabricate in some thicker latex something the way that the eyebrows, the eyes sit, so either open or closed, independent of the sculpture. Yeah, it gives us a lot more flexibility with what we actually use this for afterwards. So just putting in some eyebrow, eye bags, sorry. You can see we're just applying clay, then smoothing it out and raking it out. Just gentle little tweaks, just keeping all the shapes looking like... Was that where you opened the mouth or is that later? That could have been where I opened the mouth. I can't quite see my hands in the way. Um, no, I think it was, might have been the start, but it wasn't the final one. At this point, yeah, there's lots of raking, raking different size tools in order to adjust the texture of the skin, smooth everything down. Popping a pair of ears on. Um, I think we changed the camera angle in a second. There we go. Um, so trying to make a fairly even symmetrical pair of ears size-wise because the key things with ears are to make sure they're about the same size and that they're positioned so they look fairly symmetrical from the front, from the top, from the back because you never actually see both ears at the same time so the details of the inside aren't 
vitally important, as long as they both look like ears. But they should be as close as you can get them. Oh yeah, as close as you can get them. Um, but don't overly fixate on it unless yeah, it's an important yeah. feature, which for this it really isn't. Yeah. Unfortunately, there we go, we've got second ear on. You'll see in a minute, yeah, go to Leah's side to measure out the exact position and size, check everything's even, side to side, yeah. front to back, top to bottom. And then shortly we'll switch back to Wookie and he'll do the blocking in at the back of the ears in order to, well, I think I've done some of it, I've definitely done it on the left one to some extent, but he'll do a bit more on the right one, there he is. Um, so smoothing off the back of the ears, making making those look a bit neater. Again, on a sculpture like this, it's getting rid of a bit of the undercut around the back of the ears. You're never going to see it mm -hmm. meaningfully as a prop piece, so we just save ourselves the hassle yeah. when it comes to moulding later. You'll note the mannequin didn't have its own ears because we have failed to do that in the past. <laughs> I think that one we actually sawed off before we'd done that. Oh, okay, that's clever of us. The CFX one that we trashed. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, and just packing in the back there, you can see... Just making sure it out. looks good from the back because this is one thing with sculpts a lot of people focus on how it looks from straight ahead and you need to look at under the chin you need to look at the nose from beneath you need to look at how it looks from the back try and get that so it's it, you know it's got it's better all round so i'm trying to get the inside stretch of the ears matching and looking like they're supposed to at this point they're not quite right in a bit i go and find a book because yeah. it's not quite right But I'm getting there. Yep. You can kind of see I'm just tweaking the features of the jawline and stuff there and making yeah. his cheekbones and everything sort of marry into the forms of the ears. Yeah. Because they all sort of connect. Previously we didn't have the ears on so they weren't quite sitting how they should all look. Yeah. Because your ears sit, they sit slightly backwards usually and I think his are slightly more upright. You can see the book in the background next to Wookie's left hand now um, as he's trying to get the structures in. So your tr the tragus and the other internal, well, exterior such structures of the year. See there, I'm evening out, lowering that tragus down again. I think we've also just angles, because at one point we had one was sticking out slightly more, but that seems to have resolved at this point. Then here I'm starting to rake over the entire surface, get rid of any bumpiness, get a nice uniform shape and structure to the whole thing. Stops the whole thing looking porridgey. You've got to get it really smooth before you can actually go back and add your skin texture. Which is, yeah, <laughs> a lot of raking. Yes, yeah, it's just raking with a variety of... You start with the largest roughest, move down to the smoothest, and then... Yeah, I'm just trying to get rid of any tool marks and any porridginess mm. and bumpiness. It's got a really nice shape to it, that. It's like we know what we're doing. Yeah. And we don't, but it's like we <laughs> Hey, we do. Yeah, so it's just more raking, more refining. As we're raking, any time I see a thing I don't quite like, I'll just keep tweaking the structure yeah. at this point. Then I'm just rubbing over it with a coarse reticulate sponge, yep. then going over it with a nylon brush, which is my preferred base for skin texturing. Yep. And on to texturing. We did uh, talc first, which is again another layer of sanding, isn't it? It's sanding and it softens the forms and it gets rid of any of the beading from the brush. Yeah because it'll just pull up little balls of clay. And some of them I want because they'll give me little bumps in the skin, but most of them I don't really want, so I get rid of them. Here I'm just rolling over the entire surface with a generic pore skin texturer, which I picked up from somewhere. Because this is a prop head, we don't need to be too panicky over matching pore structures. Yeah. And... If you look, I'm a bit heavy-handed over the back of the head, but it's the back of the head. I know there's going to be a wig going on it, so I'm not too fussed. Yep. But yeah, it's just getting an even structure of pores over the face. In a minute, you'll see me going with a little thimble, thimble for the yeah. places I couldn't reach. But again, I'm just softening those out in places. But it's one where we don't go. tend to use the reference guides at this point because we've done it a lot before. But there is a structure to the pores on your face and where they go. And if it is something you're doing for the first time, you really ought to be looking those up. Yeah, and then what I've got there is a couple of wires in a handle, sprung steel so that you can drag them over and give a little twist and you'll get some nice organic looking lines and structures. Again, the nylon brush gives some directionality to the pores that were rolled in and fine lines in the texture of the skin. This guy's actually got really like smooth skin. 
-hmm. So there's not much going on. You can see we'll be looking at the reference photo there. You can see it in the background. Yeah. Then off to the spray booth. Yep. Where we get this air compressor going and then miss the whole thing a few times with a clear coat so that when we're moulding we don't damage the surface structure. He's not wearing a mask there but we have got good extraction and we do leave the room afterwards. We're literally in a massive spray booth. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye. Watch, like, subscribe and share.